Hey everybody, it's Muscle Car Campy, and we've got a rare one for you today. When you think muscle cars, the 69 Pontiac Grand Prix is probably not the first car you think of, but actually this car has the makings of a genuine muscle car. You know, realistically, this car was designed to be an Eldorado or a Thunderbird for the working man. You know, slightly more expensive than a mid-sized car, but definitely stylish and you can really see the Eldorado styling cues on this car. But Pontiac being Pontiac in the supercar era wasn't going to let it just be another mid-sized car. It offered all kinds of performance options including the 428 HO which had 390 horsepower. This particular car being a Model SJ has the 428 with 370 horsepower standard but instead of a nice automatic transmission the guy who ordered this car ordered it special with a four-speed manual gearbox under the tunnel. When it was introduced in 1962, the Grand Prix was a sporty example of a full-size car. It continued to grow over the years, and by 68, it was a pretty hefty machine. Much of its sporty flavor was gone. Pontiac saw something different was needed in the market, and for 69, it was downsized considerably. The new G-body platform was based on the mid-size A-body, which was shared with the GTO and the Chevelle, etc., but it had an extra three inches of wheelbase. Under the hood, the 428 had 10.5 to 1 compression, a Rochester 4 barrel, and a 4 by 12 inch by 4 inch bore and stroke. Torque was a robust 472 pound feet at 3200 RPM, while the peak horsepower was a low 4800. Obviously, this thing was a killer stump puller, that's for sure. The optional 428 HO made 390 horsepower. You know, Pontiac was so sure of itself when it introduced the 69 Grand Prix. It doesn't say Pontiac anywhere on the body. It says Grand Prix, it says Model SJ, even the center caps only say PMD. That's confidence. But realistically, this car was more than just exterior good looks. Check out this interior. The whole thing was pure 60s GM flight deck. You know, it's all angled around the driver. The console basically separates you from the passenger. Even the ashtray was hard to get to, but this car has everything you need. It has the clock. It has gauges. The only gauge that's missing is an alternator or generator gauge. The original owner had a hood tack installed he also had an outside mirror installed that the owner of this car did not reinstall when he restored the car. Sitting behind me, this car came with an AM FM reverb radio, but he added, the original owner added an A track between the seats here in the back seat, which makes the car even funnier because really it's a four seater now for sure. You might be able to squeeze a fifth person back there. There's width for it, but it's certainly no leg room. So this car is just full of tricks. Um, it really does make you feel like you're driving something special. Vinyl was standard inside, but leather was an option. This car has the base vinyl interior. However, it does have a host of great options, including automatic temperature control, a power driver's seat, a reclining passenger seat, power windows, and as we said before, the AM FM radio with the vibraphonic rear speaker. From a base price of $37.77, all these goodies pushed the price of the Grand Prix to $6,064 and change out the door. Oof. Pontiac obviously knew what it was doing. Even the vinyl top was an extra $142.18. But goodness, this car is just loaded with options. Like I said, man, he upped the price from $3,700 to almost $6,100. Hi, Muscle Car Campy fans. We're here with Steve Carter, the owner of this amazing 69 Grand Prix. Steve, this car rides like a new car. It's fabulous. We love all the options, even wearing my shoulder harness. Uh, most people never took these off the hooks back in the day, but you know, the way people drive nowadays, we need as much safety as we can get. But uh, you talked to the original owner and he explained to you why he bought a four speed with this car. I mean, there can't be many of them made. Why did he get a four speed? Well, it was interesting. He told me that because he had polio and using the clutch was a way to exercise his leg that had polio. I'd never heard that one before. No, that 
that's that's a new one on me i'll certainly tell you that i mean it doesn't look like the clutch is all that uh stiff i think he might have been saying that for his wife to make sure he could get the four speed and not an automatic <laughs> but uh this is a cool car now production wise you know there were what 112,000 plus grand prix made an all-time record in 1969 well, how many of them had a first of all how many of them had a manual how many of them had a four speed because the three speed was the standard transmission that's right that's right uh they made a thousand stick shifts mm -hmm. uh, out of that 300 about 300 were like this a four speed with the uh 370 horse and then i think only 94 were with the ho motor four speeds so not many you know you drill down was one less than one percent or a half a percent or something uh, with four speeds clearly anyone who ordered this car really wanted an automatic right sure this was more of a luxury automobile and so most people did not want to shift if they wanted to shift they bought a gto you know there was actually a story in car and driver where they tested a 370 horse automatic 69 grand prix and a 428 ho four-speed car that had the Royal Bobcat treatment in it. and that was a $200 option you know the higher compression all the the goodies you got with the Royal Bobcat treatment so it's amazing I think it went 15.3 at 90 91 miles an hour on the, the automatic 370 horse and 14.0 at a hundred or so with the Bobcat that's getting some in a 4,200 pound car that was really amazing but you know I'm riding around here I it's just so funny to see the the, the shift linkage the Hurst shift linkage four speed it's just not the kind of car you would expect it's so quiet and it has a nice rumble out back but you really don't hear it inside the car whatsoever right it's pretty well insulated it's, it's a big car but uh, it's a Pontiac mm -hmm. so a nice road car Yep. Nice tour. How fast are we going now? About uh, 50. 50. So what do you got? About 308 gear in here? Or 323. 323. 323. 323. So the hood tack says about 2,000 RPM from where I'm sitting. Well, that's good. I can see the hood tack. I can't see the speedometer, but I can see the hood tack. So. And you said to me earlier this is an M20, this four speed, not an M21. So it's the wide ratio box. And. Uh, you know, the, you said the, the original owner put in the 8-track player, and he, there was a side mirror over here that you didn't like, so you <laughs> took it off. Yeah, now I wish I had it back on, you know, I'm really kicking myself, because he had the dealer, like you say, put on three things. He, the dealer put on the hood tack, uh, the 8-track, and that side mirror, because he towed a John boat, he told me, he used to go fishing, and he had a little John boat that he towed. Uh, I can tell there's evidence in the trunk where he had some sort of a hitch. Um, interesting. Yeah. No, I mean, everything about this, I love the color combination, the, the silver-blue outside. What is the correct color, the correct name for that color? This is called Warwick Blue. Warwick Blue. Yeah, they had a number of blues in 69. This this was the lighter, lighter yeah. blue, lighter shade of blue. They had some darker ones. True Confessions, I had a 77 Grand Prix that was a similar color blue. Uh, a little bit lighter, but had the light uh, crushed velour blue interior with a bench seat. It was a total cruiser. As far as you know, like a, the car and driver article that Royal Bobcat GP mm. had 390 gears in it. And I was Ooh. like, man, with a 4,800 RPM peak power, <laughs> you probably... And top speed was only 104 miles an hour. Right, right. So, you know, that was crazy. But again, the tires were just so bad that, I mean, 65, 70, you know, was about as fast as you really would want to go on some of those old tires, too. Yeah, they were pretty bad by today's standards. You know, and I've driven the car with both. I had a 69, and I wanted 
wanted it to be so original. I got the belted by his tires. The right look, oh, it was great. It drove like crap. <laughs> Every little crack in the highway it would get caught in. The oh, car yeah. would go over this way, over that way. And if they sit for a while, they get flat spotted. It takes about a couple of miles to get them round again. Yeah, I said, no way, no. Yeah. And they make they make radials today that look old, too. Yes. You can do that, too. Yeah. So you have a lot of options. And the ride is so much better. Yeah, it's smoother. No, I will tell you though, I do love the interior on this car. It's nice materials. Um, like you said, it's definitely more of a cockpit for the driver, but that was the whole idea, right? Definitely. definitely. I could stand here and listen to this rumble all day long, but it's time for Muscle Car Campy to get in his car and head home. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel, watch all the videos I've done before, lots of great Pontiacs, lots of great muscle cars. Take it easy.